The Golden Age of Islam, A Journey Through History Friends, you might have heard about a remarkable era in Islamic history, a time when Muslims led the world in progress across various fields such as science, arts, philosophy, mathematics, and education. This fascinating period, known as the Golden Age of Islam, stretched from the 8th to the 13th century, coinciding with the Abbasid Caliphate. It was during this epoch that foundational ideas of modern science were laid. Now, it is crucial to understand that progress cannot occur without political stability, and the Abbasid era provided just that. From 750 to 1258 CE, the Caliphate thrived on stable governance, which became the bedrock for intellectual pursuits. Imagine, if you are constantly fighting battles within your neighborhood or struggling to pay bills, who would have the peace of mind to delve into philosophy or innovation? Baghdad, the intellectual hub. Stretching from Spain to India, this vast empire had Baghdad as its capital, a city renowned for housing one of the most famous libraries of the time, the House of Wisdom, Bayt al-Hikmah. But this wasn't just any library where people came to read books. It was an intellectual hub, a collaborative center where scholars from Persia, Greece, India, Rome, and even China came to exchange ideas, engage in discussions, and preserve ancient knowledge. Think of it as a grand group study of the most brilliant minds of that era. Scholars worked together, building upon each other's insights, contributing to advancements that benefited generations to come. A famous Islamic saying captures this spirit. When a person dies, their deeds come to an end except for three. Continuous charity, knowledge that benefits others, and a righteous child who prays for them. The second point resonates profoundly with this golden era, emphasizing the lasting impact of beneficial knowledge. Achievements of the Golden Age The accomplishments of this period are staggering. Take astronomy, for instance. Al-Batani calculated the solar year's length to an astonishingly accurate value of 365 days, 5 hours, 46 minutes, and 24 seconds. In medicine, the pioneering work of Al-Razi, known as the father of clinical medicine, remains legendary. His Kitab al-Hawi, comprehensive book on medicine, was a cornerstone medical encyclopedia. And let's talk about mathematics. The algorithms behind the very YouTube recommendation system that led you to this video trace back to Al-Khwarizmi, whose works laid the foundation of algebra. In fact, the word algorithm derives from his name. Moving to engineering, the first robot to replace human labor, a hand-washing machine, was created by Al-Jazari. His expertise in automata introduced concepts of automation far ahead of their time. Even the camera you're watching this video on owes its origins to Ibn al-Haytham, the father of optics, who developed the pinhole camera. The artistic expressions of that age also flourished, including exquisite calligraphy, poetry, prose and literature, which added to the cultural richness of the Islamic world. Religious Tolerance and Cultural Exchange the Golden Age wasn't just about scientific and artistic brilliance, it was also an era of inclusivity. The Abbasid Caliphate welcomed diverse faiths and cultures, providing protection to non-Muslims in exchange for a jizya tax. This inclusiveness fostered an environment of mutual respect and collaboration. During this time, the Abbasids adopted paper-making techniques from the Chinese after defeating the Tang dynasty in 751 CE Chinese prisoners of war taught this technique, which had previously been an exclusive privilege of the elite in China. Paper production boomed, making knowledge more accessible. This technology eventually reached Europe, where innovators like Johannes Gutenberg introduced the printing press, revolutionizing the spread of information. Ironically, when the Ottomans succeeded the Abbasids, 
they banned printing for nearly 300 years out of concern that it might lead to errors in the printing of sacred texts like the Quran. The Decline of the Golden Age However, the glory of the Golden Age was not everlasting. The decline began gradually with internal conflicts, civil wars and power struggles, such as the rivalry between the sons of Caliph Harun al-Rashid, al-Amin and al-Mamun, fractured the empire. The brothers fought over control, leading to a series of destructive battles that weakened the caliphate's unity. Over time, governors sought autonomy and regions began breaking away, further diminishing central authority. The emergence of rival dynasties like the Fatimids in North Africa, who established their caliphate in 909 CE, also eroded Abbasid power. The Fatimids, Ismaili Shias, claimed legitimacy as descendants of Prophet Muhammad's daughter Fatima, challenging the Abbasids, who were Sunni and descendants of the Prophet's uncle Abbas. The Fatimids established Cairo as their capital in 969 CE and founded Al-Azhar University, a center for learning and theology. In response, the Abbasids introduced the Nizamiya Madrasa system to strengthen Sunni identity, but this shift in focus caused academic pursuits to take a back seat. The final blow, the Mongol invasion. The ultimate end of the Golden Age came with the Mongol invasion. In 1258 CE, Hulagu Khan, the grandson of Genghis Khan, attacked Baghdad. Despite warnings, the Abbasid Caliph al-Mustasim refused to surrender, leading to the city's catastrophic destruction. The House of Wisdom was burned, and centuries of accumulated knowledge were lost within hours. Lessons from History the story of the Golden Age teaches us a profound lesson. Divisions, fueled by differences in opinion, lead to discord, and discord can dismantle even the greatest empires. Imagine if humanity could learn to agree to disagree, respecting diverse perspectives while finding common ground. But alas, history often shows otherwise. The Golden Age of Islam is a testament to what unity and collaboration can achieve and a stark reminder of what disunity can destroy. If you've enjoyed this exploration of history, do like, share and subscribe to stay connected. Until next time, take care and goodbye. This script is enriched, detailed and structured to captivate an audience while staying true to the original's narrative. You said Continue, ChatGPT said. ChatGPT. Here's the continuation of the paraphrased, expanded and converted version of your original script. Let's pick up where we left off. The fall of the Abbasid Caliphate. Seeds of division and decline. As the golden age of Islam reached its zenith, an era of unparalleled intellectual and cultural prosperity, cracks began to appear within the mighty Abbasid Caliphate. This internal disunity played a significant role in the gradual downfall of the Golden Age. The seeds of division were sown when Caliph Harun al-Rashid, one of the most celebrated rulers of the Abbasid dynasty, made a critical decision. Upon his death, he divided his vast empire between his two sons, Al-Amin and Al-Mamun, giving Al-Amin control over Baghdad and the western provinces, and al-Mamun authority over Khorasan and eastern regions. Although this decision was likely made with the intention of maintaining harmony between his heirs, it backfired spectacularly. What began as a seemingly peaceful division of power turned into a bloody civil war that spanned years, from 809 to 813 CE. Al-Mamun, the elder of the two brothers, eventually emerged victorious, conquering Baghdad and even ordering the execution of his younger sibling Al-Amin as a punitive measure. This infighting among the Abbasids led to a decline in central authority, paving the way for regional governors to demand autonomy. These once loyal governors now sought independence from the Caliphate, fragmenting the empire further. Civil unrest, power struggles 
and resource depletion caused by prolonged conflict left the Abbasid Caliphate vulnerable to both internal and external threats. The rise of the Fatimid dynasty, a rival to Abbasid authority. While the Abbasid dynasty grappled with its internal divisions, a new power emerged in North Africa, the Fatimid Caliphate. Established in 909 CE, the Fatimid Caliphate declared its own caliph, Abdullah al-Mahdi Billah, and asserted independence from Abbasid rule. The most striking distinction between these two dynasties lay in their sectarian identities. The Fatimids were Ismaili Shia Muslims, while the Abbasids adhered to Sunni Islam. The Fatimids justified their claim to the Caliphate by tracing their lineage to Prophet Muhammad's PBUH daughter, Fatima al-Zahra, and her husband, Ali ibn Abi Talib. On the other hand, the Abbasids traced their descent to the Prophet's uncle, Abbas ibn Abd al-Mutalib. This sectarian divide created a bitter rivalry that further strained the Islamic world. In 969 CE, the Fatimids captured Egypt and established their capital in Cairo, a city they founded and adorned with remarkable institutions, including Al-Azhar Mosque and University. These institutions became centers of learning, theology, and intellectual exchange, contributing significantly to the spread of Shia ideology. To counter the rising influence of the Fatimids, the Abbasids introduced the Nizamiya Madrasa system, emphasizing Sunni education and theology. However, this shift in focus from secular to religious education had unintended consequences. The academic rigor that had characterized the Golden Age began to wane, as resources were redirected toward preserving Sunni identity rather than fostering scientific and intellectual progress. The Mongol invasion, the final blow to the Golden Age. Despite the internal and external challenges, the Golden Age of Islam persisted for several centuries. However, the end came abruptly in 1258 CE, when the Mongols, under the leadership of Hulagu, Khan, a grandson of Genghis Khan, launched a devastating attack on Baghdad. The Abbasid Caliphate, already weakened by internal strife and fragmentation, stood little chance against the Mongol onslaught. Before the invasion, Hulagu Khan sent an ultimatum to the Abbasid Caliph, al-Mustasim, demanding surrender. Refusing to compromise, the Caliph rejected the offer, choosing to defend Baghdad's honor and dignity. The consequences were catastrophic. The Mongols razed Baghdad to the ground, slaughtering thousands of innocent inhabitants and destroying the famed House of Wisdom. Books, manuscripts, and centuries of accumulated knowledge were burned or discarded into the Tigris River, which, according to legend, ran black with ink and red with blood. The fall of Baghdad marked the end of the Abbasid Caliphate as a dominant power and signified the definitive close of the Golden Age of Islam. This tragic event underscored the devastating consequences of disunity and the loss of intellectual and cultural heritage. Lessons from History – Unity Amidst Diversity The history of the Golden Age of Islam offers invaluable lessons for contemporary times. It demonstrates the extraordinary potential of a society that values intellectual collaboration, tolerance and diversity. Scholars from different cultural, religious and philosophical backgrounds work together to achieve remarkable advancements, enriching not only the Islamic world, but humanity as a whole. However, it also serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of internal divisions and sectarianism. The decline of the Golden Age reminds us that progress thrives in an environment of stability and unity, whereas disunity leads to decline and vulnerability. Imagine if the sectarian divides of the past had been bridged with mutual respect and understanding. What if differences of opinion had been seen as opportunities for growth rather than causes for conflict? The possibilities for further advancements and contributions to global civilization would have been limitless. 
a call to reflect and act. As we reflect on this magnificent era of human achievement, let us draw inspiration from its successes and learn from its mistakes. The golden age of Islam was a beacon of light, illuminating the path for countless generations. Its legacy lives on in the sciences, arts, philosophy, and countless other fields that continue to shape our modern world. Let us strive to emulate the spirit of collaboration and tolerance that defined this golden era, ensuring that the lessons of the past guide us toward a brighter, more united future. If you found this exploration of the golden age of Islam insightful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more historical deep dives. Until next time, take care and keep learning. Goodbye.